Family Theater presents Diana Lynn and Barry Sullivan. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Stupid Saint, starring Diana Lynn. And now, here is your host, Barry Sullivan. Thank you, Tony LaFrana. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Stupid Saint, starring Diana Lynn as Pauline. Miss Fry? Miss Fry, I know you're awake. Open your eyes, please. If you make it necessary for me to raise my voice, it'll simply disturb the other ladies in the world. All right, ward. Doctor, I'm awake. What do you want? How do you feel? How should I feel? Oh, a little weak, I guess. All right, I feel a little weak. What's the screen doing around my bed? So we can talk privately. How many other beds are there in here? Five, but just now only two more of them are occupied. Are they cases like mine? No. Mrs. Goggin across the aisle has a liver ailment, and the lady next to you, Miss Cartmill, suffers from arthritis. So all we've got in common is being on the county, hmm? That's not a very pleasant way of putting it. <laughs> no, but there it is, isn't it? Miss Fry, I find it interesting that you can face this situation squarely, but that you... Do the others know why I'm here? No. How soon can I leave? I'm afraid that's not up to me. Oh, well, who is it up to? Miss Fry, in cases of this kind, the hospital authorities have an obligation to... Well, to make every effort to... Oh, uh, yes, to prevent the patient from trying it again. Roughly, yes. To heal the spirit as well as the body. Well... Well, it must be wonderful to do that, Doctor. How does it feel? Miss Fry. Do you just wheel them into the operating room and lay open their soul? You take a little stitch here, a little stitch Ms. there, Fry, and everything's great again. You're not acting very sensible. <laughs> yeah, but you're doing fine. If you don't want the others to know why you're here... I don't care what they know. Doctor, you come in here with your white coat and your clean hands, and you're going to save me. How idealistic. There's nothing idealistic about it. You're a sick woman. Then let me die. Why can't you? That's all I wanted. I just wanted to die. Miss Fry. And I don't want to talk. You don't have to, but there's something that you must understand about why you're here. When a person attempts what you've attempted, they can hurt quite a few people besides themselves. But I don't have any family. I don't That's have anyone. That's not what I mean. It wouldn't hurt anybody, and it would stop this terrible loneliness. This time it was sleeping pills, but the next time you might decide to turn on gas in a building where 50 other families are living, or throw yourself out of a window onto a crowded street. That's what I mean about hurting other people besides yourself. <laughs> well, you worry about the other people, Doctor. They never worried about me. Oh, I always say there's nothing like a nice breakfast to start off the day. All but the prunes, everyday prunes, prunes. Oh, but they're very good for you, Miss Cartmel. Dr. Oliver says that they're especially good for the blood. You're thinking of spinach. Oh, no, 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 I heard that long before, Dr. Oliver. All my life, oh, yes, prunes are good for the blood. Haven't you heard that, Miss? Yeah, uh, Miss, you... Oh, it seems I heard they were good for something. Oh, Jesse, wait until I tell that to your friend, Mr. Colby. Good for something. <laughs> but nobody knows what. Well, Mr. Colby is very fond of prunes. That's not what he told me. Well, it's what he told me. Just yesterday afternoon in this very room, I was saying to him, Mr. Colby, it's getting so I dread the thought of breakfast and those prunes. And he said, I know how you feel, Miss Cartmel. Well, he's always trying to please everyone. You just ask 
this young lady. Isn't that what Mr. Kirby said? Is he the old man that came in here with the checkerboard? <gasps> Don't let him hear you call him old. That's the one. He's very sensitive about his oh, age. Well, I'm afraid I didn't pay much attention to anything he said. Well, he was very explicit about the prunes. Well, I must say I'm not surprised. It's just like him. If you ask me, young lady, I think he just eats them to keep up his strength for checkers. <laughs> you know, he plays over 20 games a day. What's wrong with him? He just likes it. <laughs> no, I mean, why is he here in the hospital? Oh. What is he suffering from? I think he's just old and not very bright. Oh, now, don't let him hear you say that. He did have some stomach trouble for a while, but that's all cured. I think they just let him stay around. <gasps> Oh, my. 9.20. Oh, time for Janet Burke. For what? On the television, Janet Burke. Girl in turn. They let us watch it down in the lobby every morning. Oh, for heaven's sake, where are my slippers? Under your chair, and if they were snakes, they'd bite you. Uh, like to come along, miss? No, thanks. Well, it, it is the worst thing you ever saw, but... I don't uh, think the man who writes it was ever inside a hospital. Are you sure you won't come? Well, no, I... Uh, lots of laughs. Yeah, well, I can't. I'm confined to the ward. Oh. Oh, I forgot. Come on, Jesse. Yes. Uh, we'll bring up a newspaper on the way All back. Right. Hey, where's everyone going? Oh, Mr. Covey. Uh, we're going to see Janet Burke, girl intern. Uh, Mr. Covey, I've got a bone to pick with you. Uh, did you tell Miss Cartmel you were tired of prunes? Oh, I hardly think so. Mr. Covey. Uh, see, now, what did I tell you, I see? may have said that it's possible to get too much of a good thing. Exactly. And prunes are a very good thing, Miss Cotton. Oh, Mr. Covey, I know you like them. Yes, 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 we'll do that. <laughs> yes, we'll How about some checkers this afternoon? Oh, yes, this afternoon be, be dandy. Would uh, you like a game, young lady? No, I'm afraid not. We were introduced yesterday. Yes, I remember. Uh, Miss Fry, isn't it? Look, I'm sure your intentions are very kindly, but I really just don't feel like talking. You from the Midwest? Yes, Ohio. And now if it's all the same to you... Why'd you ever come to New York? Mr. Kobe, I have no doubt that you've heard all about me. You see, I'm the girl that swallowed the bottle of sleeping pills. Now, six years ago, I placed third in a beauty contest, and so I came to New York. And between then and last week, when I bought those pills, just about everything you suspect of me has happened. Now, that's the whole story, so you can get out now and start spreading it around. You don't have a very good opinion of people, do you? No, I don't. Least of all, nosy old men with checkerboards. Maybe if you could try to make friends with some of the ladies... I don't want any friends! Look, I've spent six years in this city waiting for somebody, just anybody, to do one nice thing without wanting something for it. To say one nice word. And they didn't. And they won't. So please just leave me alone. I'll come back tomorrow morning. Maybe you'll feel like playing. Uh... <laughs> no. No, I won't. Well, I'll come back anyway. Miss Fry, are you asleep? No. I've been waiting for Jesse to drop off. I, I wanted to tell you something. What about? You see, Jesse's awful innocent about the world, and she'd be scandalized to hear me say something like this, so I wanted to be sure she's asleep. Well, she's asleep, all right. I've been listening to her wheeze for the last half hour. Yes. Well, well it's about the trouble you had with Mr. Kobe this morning. You see, when you shouted at him and all, oh, that was a big mistake. Miss Cartmill, when I want any advice, no, I... Ask... don't get feisty with me. I'm just telling you for your own good. You want to get out of here, don't you? <laughs> What's that got to do with it? Well, the longer you take coming around to acting civil, the longer you'll be here. They watch things like that. Oh. Well, I don't care what they do. Well, at least you'd like to get out of this room with the barred windows, wouldn't you? Maybe take a walk down in the courtyard and get some fresh air. Maybe. Why, sure you would, a young girl like you. You just get down in that courtyard and get a little sunshine and air. Oh, life will look a lot you better. You keep saying to you. down. Where is it? Well, it's just the other side of this building, between the two wings. We're up on the fifth floor, though. 
Yes, I know. That's why I say if you want to start getting privileges, don't go picking on Mr. Colby anymore. He's been around here a long time. Is that right? Yes. And anyone will tell you he may not be very bright. But if you can't get along with Mr. Colby, well, you can't get along with anyone. Well, thanks, Miss Cartmill. Thanks very much. That was a good one. That was a good one indeed. Three at a clip. <laughs> well, it's your move, Mr. Kobe. Well, let's see. There. And there. Well, <laughs> that's the nastiest trap I ever walked into. Mm. Two games in a row. Oh, you're too good for me, Pauline. Do you want another? No, sir. I think I'll smoke my pipe unless you mind. Oh, no. Go right ahead. Mm. I understand you you finished your whole breakfast again this morning. That's four days in a row now. You keep close tabs, don't you? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Well, you must care about something. Well, sure. Sure I do. Like what? Well, life. Living again. I I've decided I made a mistake. I'm still young, and I've got a lot ahead of me. Do you really feel that way? Well, sure I do. That was a crazy thing to do. Gosh, I'm glad to hear you talk like this, Pauline. You know, all you really need is friends. That's a whole secret. Just like that. I learned it a long time ago. Friends are the best thing to keep a person from being unhappy. You know, Mr. Kobe, I never thought of it that way. Well, I want you to know you can... Count me as one of your friends. And you'll make others, too. You ain't see. Well, it's pretty hard to make any others cooped up in this world. Yes, I know. Uh, maybe if I could go down and sit in front of the television with Jesse or Miss Cartmill, or, or, well, take a walk out in the courtyard. Oh, I... that'll come. You'll see. <laughs> well, yeah, but I've been here over a week now. I'm perfectly well. Well, uh, I, I think they're worried about you. Well, why should they be worried anymore? I told you I realize I made a mistake. Oh, I, I, I know you do. Just from hearing you talk, I can tell you mean it, but... But you think the doctors might not believe me. Well, they... They take a lot of time making up their minds about things. Do, do you think, Mr. Kobe, that if you were to say something... Oh, shucks. I, I don't count for anything like that around here. Oh, I'm sure you're wrong. Jesse and Miss Carton will say that you have a lot of influence. No, no. Well, you said I count you as one of my friends. I want you to, Pauline. But well, look, won't you even try? They wouldn't listen to me. Oh, at least you could tell them that you liked me and that we were friends and that you thought I ought to be able to get up and walk around a little. Well, sure, I'd be glad to do that, but I uh, don't want to raise your hope. Oh, that Janet Burr girl intern, it just gets worse every time. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. You know, today she took out an appendix with a bobby pin. Mm. Well, how was the checker game, Mr. Kobe? Pauline beat me bad this morning. <laughs> I was just lucky. Oh, dear. Will you look at that sunshine out that window? Oh, if it weren't for my liver, I could jump through a hoop. If it weren't for my arthritis, I could hold it for oh. you. <laughs> sure is a beautiful day. Do you suppose they'll be walking down in the courtyard this morning? Oh, yeah, but you won't be able to find space on the path. <laughs> I'd love to try. Mrs. Doggin. Oh, my goodness, Doctor, is it Wednesday again? Good morning, morning Dr. Dr. Oliver. Good morning, Dr. Uh -huh. Oliver. Mr. Colby, ladies. Time for another test? I'm afraid so, Jesse. They're waiting down in the lab. Oh, that's all this place is. Tests and tests. And prunes and prunes. Well, I like uh the prunes. Yeah, I'll be right along, Doctor. Oh, uh, say, uh, Dr. Oliver. Yes? Uh, have you got a moment, please? There, there's something I'd like to ask you. Well, I'm pretty busy, Mr. <laughs> well, it looks like you've taken my advice to heart, Miss Fry. Do you mean Mr. Kobe? He's practically adopted you. Yeah. <laughs> well, he seems to enjoy it. Oh, he enjoys everything. I wish I knew his secret. It's no secret. 
I was brought up by an uncle like Mr. Kobe. He, too, was sweet and gullible. Was he happy? Well, sure he was happy. He didn't have brains enough not to be. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I had a few less brains. <laughs> <laughs> well, kid yourself. People like that are asleep. They go through life thinking everybody loves them, and then they wind up in a place like this. Oh, well, what can you do? Well, the minute you find you're alone, Miss Cartmel, just make sure you stop getting any older. Let's see now, Miss Fry. You say you want me to contact your uncle in Ohio. That's right, Doctor. I want to go back. To live there? Yes. I, I never realized how much I missed the place. It's, uh, well, it's taken this thing I've been through to make me see it. What will you do when you get home? Oh, we'll take some kind of job, I guess. I, I learned typing All in right, high Ms. school. Fry. I could... I'll contact him, but I don't believe you. Well, it's true. In taking those pills, I realize I made a mistake. I'm sure of that. I only wish I knew where you think you made it. <sighs> what is that supposed to mean? Nothing. Nothing, Miss Fry. I'll write to your uncle, and if that's all... Well, there, yeah, there's one other thing, Doctor. Yes? Well, I, I've just got to get out of this ward for a while. I've got to get a breath of fresh air. We should be able to arrange that. Oh, good, because if I could just take a walk down in the courtyard with Jesse or Miss Cartmill... Or Mr. Kobe? Oh, yes. Why do you mention him? Because he mentioned you. That's what he came out of your ward to speak to me about yesterday. What was that? He said you needed to get a breath of fresh air. Oh, well, I guess I did say something about it in front of him. We play checkers every morning, So you know. he tells me. Yeah, he, he's a wonderful old man. You may not think so, but he is. I just said I thought so. Take it easy. Is this the way you treat people just because they're broke? Just because they're on the counter? Well, you love that phrase. You twist you? everything, doctor, because they can't fight All back? All right, Miss Fry. You can go walking in the courtyard. Now let's let it go at that. like us wandering around the corridors after the lights are out. Why don't you ring? Well, it's just down the hall. I'd rather not bother the nurse. Would you like me to fill your glass? Oh, no, thank you. I've still got plenty. All right, I'll be right back. Uh, Miss Fry. Yes? Uh, you're feeling a lot better, aren't you? Yes, much better. Oh, I can tell. This is the first time I've ever heard you offer to do something for someone else. <laughs> and that's a good sign. Oh, I'm glad you think so. It's those walks down in the courtyard you've been taking the past few days. What, you're making friends and starting to care about life again. Jesse, I'm very thirsty, so I... Oh, I hope the nurse doesn't see you. It would be terrible if they took your privileges away just when you're making such progress. I'll be all right. That's why I hope they find that old key. You see, if they don't, well, they might take away everyone's privileges. What key? The one I was telling you and Miss Cartmel about at supper tonight. Uh, the janitor's key to the sun deck. Oh, well, he probably just mislaid it. Well, that's what I say, but Miss Cartmel says she thinks it was stolen. But I say, now, why would anyone steal a key to a sun deck? It, well, it's just a balcony. Uh, there's no place to go from there. But down. Well, that's what I mean. Oh, I do hope they find it soon. Well, I'm sure they will, Jesse. I'll be right back. You be careful now. Don't you get caught. Don't worry. I won't. Pauline! <gasps> what are you doing here? Don't do it, Pauline. Are you watching me again? Please. Don't come any closer. All right, I, I won't. But listen, please listen to me. I've been down in the chapel because when I heard that key had been stolen, I was afraid it might have been you, and I went down to pray that it wasn't. Don't do it, Pauline. You've got a whole life ahead of you. 
A whole life of what? Believe me. What? A life in a place like this? That's not what counts. Yeah, well, it counts with me. No. Keep it, away from me. It's friends, Pauline. You've got to understand that. People you can do it for. Oh, no, you don't it understand go. him. If I could just Stop make it. it. See how simple it is. Mr. Kobe, what's wrong? I, I know you could. Mr. Kobe. Mr. Kobe, what's the matter? No idea he was ill. Uh, he, he's always so chipper and everything. Oh, did the nurse say what it was? No, just something about his stomach. And he was still breathing, though, when they put him on the stretcher. Yes, he just, was still breathing. told us all this four times. Uh, Eat your breakfast. Well, I, I, I just want to be sure. I wish we'd hear something. Dr. Oliver's with him now. He'll be all oh, right. Yes, you can trust Dr. Oliver. Well, did they say what they were going to do to you for stealing that key? No, they didn't. Uh, probably take your privileges away. That's the usual for breaking any rules. Well, it just doesn't seem very important. Oh, well, you say that now. But you'll change your tune in a few days. It's mm -hmm. the privileges around here that make life worth it. All living. right! Oh. Oh, you don't have to shout. All right, so it puts another week on my sentence. More likely to. All right, make it a month. What's the difference? An old man is sick downstairs, and you're yapping about rules and privileges. Well, really, you don't have to shout, Miss Well, I'll Hyde. shout if I like. Ladies. Oh, oh. Dr. Oliver. Uh, you'll have to excuse us, Doctor. We... That's uh, all right, Jesse. Well, how is he, Doctor? How is Mr. Kobe? I'm sorry to have to tell you that he died about an hour ago. <gasps> oh, my. Poor Mr. Kobe. He was under sedation. He went very peaceful. Oh, my, my. Oh, such a sweet old man. Always around with his checkerboard. Jesse... Could yes. I ask you and Miss Cartnell to let me speak with Miss Fry alone, please? Of course. Anything you say, Dr. Oliver. It's almost time for Janet Burke, anyhow. Yeah. Thank you. And, and we will bring back a paper. Yes, we'll do that. We'll get yes, and okay. chocolate from the machine. Yes. I want to tell you, Miss Fry, that you haven't anything to blame yourself for. No matter where he was or what he was doing, Mr. Kobe would have died exactly when he did. No. Oh, no, he wouldn't, Doctor. He wasn't sick. He was incurably sick, and he knew it. But he just didn't want it nosed around. I told him three weeks ago that he had a month to live, and that was stretching it. <laughs> Are you trying to heal my spirit again, Doctor? I don't have to. It's already healed. No. Yes. No. Last night, when Mr. Kobe slumped to the floor. Oh, well, I wish you were right. I am, Miss Fry, and you know it. Tell the truth, something happened last night, didn't it? No, not like you think. It was just a little thing, but it happened. You could have gone out onto the sun deck and over the balcony, but you didn't. Well, he was lying there with no one to help and him. And you were frightened for him, for someone outside of yourself for a change. Well, he said he'd been down in the chapel praying for me. A silly, stupid old man. I had to do something. I don't think he was stupid. He was simple and fumbling, always trying to do things for people that they could do better themselves. I understand he wasn't even a very good checker player. He was a terrible checker player. But I'm not convinced he was stupid. He made friends of people. And I think even more important, he made them make a friend of him. How do you mean? Well, the way you made a friend of him last night, by trying to help him when he needed it. That's why you feel like living again. All right, I do feel like it. But I'm still not sure why. You say Kobe was praying for you in the chapel? That's what he said. Didn't you talk to him? He never regained consciousness. But I wouldn't be surprised if he wanted you to have this. What's that? A slip of paper we found in the pocket of his bathroom. He must have taken it down to the chapel with him. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Divine Master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled 
as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. This is Barry Sullivan again. They say that every family has at least one skeleton in the closet. All right, who knows? Maybe my ancestors were pirates. And maybe your old Uncle Harry, who turns up every few years, never did a day's work in his life. But if you're going to start worrying about a family skeleton, it's good to remember the neighbors next door may have a bigger one, only they keep it in a better closet. That's all. Yes, we all hold highly with respectability. And the idea of living up to the Joneses keeps a lot of people awake nights. That is, until they come to a realization and all the time, the Joneses are usually trying to keep up with them. You know, a family can be happiest when they have their own high standards, their own family life within their home. And the best way for complete unity in a home is a family prayer. Family prayer is a secret every home can have for happy family life. Praying together as a family means God's daily blessing. And when you live up to the daily practice of a family prayer, you have indeed the best example for a happy home that any family can give. For the family that prays together, stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Stupid Saint, starring Diana Lynn. Barry Sullivan was your host. Others in our cast were Thomas Laughlin, Gigi Pearson, Marjorie Bennett, and Herb Butterfield. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage screen and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The Visitor, starring Edmund O'Brien. Dorothy Warrenshold will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.